Representative Hafford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> and uh, Representative Fresno, I, I must say you're doing a great job, unless uh, I think Representative Proctor is probably whispering everything to you. Uh, it's quite amazing watching you do this, so thank you. Um, that said, uh, I had a question come in about an hour ago from a constituent, um, and not being part of your committees, uh, I, I just needed to ask, in terms of art teachers, physical education teachers, um, are they going to be part of this initial phase into this bill, or are they going to be somehow um, evaluated differently? Representative Fresen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, um, when, when you're talking about, for example, PE teachers and kind of non-specific core subject teachers, the way that this bill differentiates that is that obviously to, to, to gain a, a specific grasp, since it's not, um, uh, let's say, a statewide assessment exam that's, that's being applied or something on a general co uh, core curriculum basis that's being applied, what this bill would say is that you use many variables um, in order to be able to evaluate and assess that teacher while still recognizing that A, uh, um, the each individual district has already been on um, statutory um, requirement to create individual assessment tools for all its subject areas. B, they're going to be receiving race to the top dollars to establish, to uh, create these exams. And in those specific areas, the only difference is that um, while you can use many other variables, it goes from rather than 50% to 30% once it's established how to actually generate a learning growth based on that area. So there, there is a distinction between those area, those subject areas and, and the regular. Representative Pafford. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, this, this helps me uh, understand a little bit better, I believe. Um, in, in terms of the fear factor, you know, as a teacher now under this legislation, if you don't perform, you're not going to be teaching. So there's, there's a fear factor involved in, in order to keep your job. Uh, from what I understand today, that th there isn't necessarily dollars attached for a merit increase currently. So where is the actual carrot now uh, until we find those extra dollars? Representative Fresen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Where I think the carrot exists, um, Representative Pafford, is exactly where there's a void of a carrot in the current system. Meaning, if you're a highly performing teacher in year six, year seven, A, the current system has absolutely no ability to determine whether or not you actually in fact are highly effective or more effective than another teacher either that's been in the, in the system less time than you or more time than you. But more importantly, even if they had a system to determine that, that effectiveness, which is not in place nor are they actually exercising it, the way that they're actually setting their salary schedules right now would never reward you for that excellence anyway. So the carrot right now, the, the only existing carrot right now that exists in the structure as we have it is stick around for 20 years and you'll actually make more money at the end of it. Whereas this bill, will, the carrot it exists in the fact that when funds are going, to, are going to be available for salary increases, you are going to be immediately recognized for your effort and more importantly your effectiveness in the classroom rather than saying thank you, wait around another 15 years for us to pay you. Representative Pafford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. But when you say immediately right now there isn't a dollar amount because it's not part of the bill? Representative Fresen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What I, what I mean by immediately is if there's not going to be any salary increases for the next two years, for the next ten years, whatever it may be because of budget crises, this bill cannot address that. Budgets are budgets. What it is saying, however, is that if and when salary increases are going to be given, this bill says if you're a highly effective teacher and you're an effective teacher, irrespective of how long you've been in the system, you will be immediately rewarded first, as opposed to told, stick around for another 15 years until you actually get paid. Representative Pafford, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, members, during yesterday's second reading, I asked where the carrot was for the teachers in the highly effective category. The response was concise and honest. If teachers stick around for two to ten years, there could 
they could receive merit pay if there was money. This bill carries a big stick, yet offers no carrot. Let's be very, very clear. Now, the second point that I'd like to bring up to you, and, and members, uh, if you were here last year, perhaps this, this rings a bell. Um, Representative Aubuchon and Representative Waldman worked diligently to create a time yesterday in, in second reading for questions. I noticed that about two-thirds of this chamber offered no question on this bill. I did notice that the last two rows offered plentiful amounts of questions. And so I'm bothered by this, and, and I can only assume one of two things. The majority of you understood what the sponsor said was new language, over 45 pages, and decided you knew the bill, and that certainly could be true. This bill needed new questions because, as we saw it, um, it was very much like Senate Bill 6. I have to presume that there were a lack of questions because most of you understood that this very language was indeed very close to Senate Bill 6 and therefore there was no need to learn about the bill. Members, I would only offer this. Last year the final vote count on this was 64 to 55. That means many of us in this chamber used our individual intellect to determine for ourselves and for our districts what was best for public education. I would suggest and hope that the majority of you do the same this year. I do oppose this bill, Mr. Speaker, and I thank you for the time. Representative Waldman, you're recognized.